Stephanie is back, and this is going to be an eight-minute video. It's kind of sped up just a little bit, so here's what I did. I used my regular camera to record all these different little tiny clips. You know, I had like, I don't know, 26 clips. Then I send them to my Perfect Video app that I've had for a long time, and then I put all the pieces together, and then I send it back to my camera roll, and then I upload it here. So that's how I did that. Just figured I'd let you know. We're going to go ahead and remove everything with my two-time coarse carbide safety bit, you guys. I love these gold bits. I know the other ones I had were silver. I don't really think there's a difference. I think it's just the color, but whatever. I like the gold ones, too. Also, heads up on a new handpiece. I didn't get it yet, but I did order a new KP60 handpiece from the Koopa website because I really am not fond of this Koopa 2.0 drill, okay? I'm just going to put that out there. I just do not think it's powerful like my other one is. So since my other power box is still good, I went ahead and ordered a new handpiece, and it cost about, with their coupon they had, about 240 bucks. so not bad. So I cleaned out from under her nail with my under the nail bit, which I call it. And then I'm going to flip her back over and push her cuticles back with my cuticle pusher. This cuticle pusher is from Revel, uh, the nail dip nail company. They sent me PR like last year and they sent me this cuticle pusher with it. And I still love it very, very much because it has like this little tiny, tiny lip on the end of it. And as I'm scraping, it's actually scraping uh, skin off the nail. Not, you know, I'm not doing any harm to the nail, but it's gently scraping nail. And when I pull it back to the nail, if there's anything lifting, it catches on there and I can clip that away. So I like that part too. So we're going to go ahead and prep her natural nail area with my fine grit sanding band. You want to keep your drill on a very low speed for this part. Now, here's the thing with this drill, you can't put it on a super low speed. You got to put it like on a medium to high speed for it to even work or the drill bit actually stops in the middle of working. It's so annoying. And lately, my bits are starting to come out of the drill as I'm working. I am just not happy with this drill at all, you guys. So it will become a backup drill. Anyway, keep your drill on a low speed for this part. Keep your drill straight so you're not digging in, creating any rings of fire, which are then um, you know, red lines or any heat spikes to heat up the nail. We're going to get some 100% acetone on my lint-free wipe. We're going to, uh, we're going to clean, dehydrate, and we're going to push our cuticles back even more because they do move better when they are wet, okay? And I use 100% acetone for this process. You want to make sure the nails are completely dry before you go back and put any primer on, though, and also use primer very sparingly. Can you just take a look at this new Dappen dish? I got it from Spencer's. It is awesome. Let's go in. Tap, tap. Hold. Oh, my God. Look at that bead. It is a perfect bead. We're going to go ahead and press that down close to the cuticle, but not on the cuticle, because you want to be able to pat that product in place where you want it. You always want to stay in control of your product, you guys. Do not let your product control you. It's just product okay so you are in control if you find that a bead is too dry and too hard to put in place hurry up and scrape it off and start over if it's too wet and it's running all over the place wipe it off and start over don't ever be scared to start over you guys this is how you learn and trust me the person you're doing the nails on knows no difference so do not be embarrassed okay so after i file shape and contour i'm going to go back with my finishing bit just to seal the cuticle a little bit more and make sure it's nice and flush. You want it super, super flush. That way there's no lifting and there's no ledge for your hair to get under. Okay. This is the good part. She picked a color from my line of gels. Can you guess which color she chose that she wants today, guys? Can you? Huh? There it is. Witch's brew. You know it. It, I had it over in my big witch collection. Actually, I did it just for the video, but I thought it was pretty awesome. This part I did purposely in slow motion. And for two reasons. One, just for the aesthetic of this part. And two, I want you to look at this color. I want you to just take a look at this green color that I chose for this line of gels. Okay? It is the perfect neon-ish green. Now, there might be a green that's more neon than this out there, I'm sure, but this color is a cross between light green, 
dark green, neon green. It's creamy. It's smooth. It is full coverage with two coats, and I love this color. There was many, many greens to choose from, guys, and I was not joking around when I picked this one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint Stephanie's nails. Now, after she washes her hands, I do clean them off again with acetone or a gel cleanser, you guys, because you want to make sure that if your client is washing their hands and they're using soap, that you're getting that soap residue completely off the nail before you paint because... If you try to paint the nail and there's soap residue on there that you don't see with your naked eye, then it's going to pull from the sides, it's going to bubble, it's going to separate, you're going to see all kinds of shit going on and you're going to be like, why is this doing this? And it's usually because the nail is not clean enough. No, I do not use a base coat when I use my gel polishes. Why? I don't know. I think it's mostly because I prep the nail in a way where I really don't need a base coat because the nails are not a high shine, okay? They have a little roughness to them when I am done doing the whole nail process. So if you're buffing to a high shine, you do want to use a base coat because gel does not like to stick to shiny surfaces. Acrylic will, gel will not. So in turn, you will need a base coat. So the base coat will stick to the nail and then have a tackiness to it. And then the gel will stick to the base coat. Okay, let's move on. I did two coats. Did you see that coverage? It is beautiful. We're going to do some Aurora Chrome Powder on here. And I am not hating it because it is going to be gorgeous. Just wait. Use your No Cleanse Gel Top Coat. It's the only way to apply chrome properly. After you cover the nail completely with that, check for imperfections. Take the nail like I'm doing right now. Let the light bounce around the top of the nail and see if there's any imperfections. You see that little imperfection right there? If I didn't catch that and I rubbed the chrome powder on there, the chrome would have picked that imperfection up and it would have pissed you off and you would have had to have started over. So just simply brush out that imperfection with your top coat, check it one more time, and then stick your client in the lamp. After 30 seconds, you're ready to go. Let's get my Aurora Chrome Powder. I get it from Amazon. They come in little new containers now, but they used to look like this. So I'm going to go ahead and use my finger to rub the chrome powder on because I just feel like when I use my finger, I'm getting better coverage and I'm getting all those little particles really, really rubbed into that gel or that top coat. And it just makes for a better high shine. I just don't like the way the little makeup applicators apply the chrome powder, although there are certain things that I will um, you know, certain ways I apply the chrome, especially if I'm doing like an ombre chrome, I will apply it with uh, the little makeup applicators because I need to do a couple of colors. So after I get all the chrome powder on, I'm going to go back with a clean finger and I'm going to rub it in even more to make sure all those particles are gone. Look how beautiful that is. So I'm going to get a little lint-free cloth with some gel cleanser on it because when you're top coating it, you want to make sure your brush is clean before you dip it back in your little jar so you're not transferring particles back in there, okay? Unless you have your own jar for chrome powder, which is a good idea. I mean, your own bottle of top coat for chrome powder. After that, clean them off and she's ready for her final picture. Here's the final look, guys.